Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Amir Meet. Uh, today I have my two brothers from Ghana based in New Jersey and uh, they've been doing music for a while. You're going to get to know them better. Stick and stay and make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, enjoy it. of heaven above the God of three in one holy oh holy 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 welcome back so I have with me Felix and Albert Quickly, give us a little bit of background to who you are individually before we think of you collectively. So my name is Albert Iyaboa. Um, I was born and raised in the um, eastern part of Ghana, in Kwapem, um, to be precise. I, I was born into uh, the Presbyterian um, Church, but part of me grew up in the Assemblies of God Church, and um, part of me also grew up in the Pentecostal Church because that's where my mom goes to church and my dad is with the Assemblies of God Church. And um, part of me also grew up with um, Jehovah Witness Church because of my grandma. So I'm all over the place. But uh, my grooming and growth um, came from the Assemblies of God Church. That was where you know, I was trained. I would say probably at the age of 10 years or 11 years old, I started playing the drums for the main church. It was all self-taught. Nobody taught me how to play. Um, believe I had some interest and passion for drumming. I mean, to fast forward, right from primary, you know, school, I went into, you know, the secondary school, Kofrodia Sectec. That was when, you know, I joined the school band. Um, and um, it all started from there. So I started playing for the school band. I was playing gigs here and there. And that was where I also realized that I could sing as well, aside, you know, drumming. And um, yeah. Oh well, so Felix um, basically started also singing pretty young, but uh, I would say that I'm more of a runaway singer or runaway Christian. <laughs> I've always been on the move, on the go, anything that has to do with um, Christian stuff. You'd see me there, but then um, deep inside, I've always been afraid. I've always, you know, had um, that terrifying, frightening, you know, notion of stepping out. But actually, um, when you know I went to a decided college, basically I felt that that is where the passion and the talent was um, nurtured because um, I built some confidence with the kind of people that I went to meet back um, in Abisado and um, the choir that also was shaping a lot of such young people, Flames of Revival. I think you'll remember it was um, the most prominent boys choir uh, in Cape Coast doing a lot of road trips as well. So Flames of Revival really helped me to shape this gifting. So fast forward um, in the stage, I decided to really be among people who could really sing and have the confidence and build a repertoire or a reputation in the music industry. So my church, um, the Epic Church International, actually has a very vibrant choir, you know, and so um, back before it was called Faith Fellowship. So you know, I was in the choir and I've been singing with these people for a bit. And, um, I, you know, I approached a couple of my friends in the choir and told them about this project that Albert and I are undertaking. And they, you know, gracefully um, obliged to be a part of it. So that has been a little bit about the journey up until now. But it's been um, a running away from the facts until God says now is the time. So how did you guys meet? Was it through church or your friends already? Uh, all right, so let me just chip in a little right. bit. Um, before I go to meet Felix um, personally, Prince, I mean, I go to the same church with Prince and, um, and the wife. Prince had, I mean, told me before, things was like, I have a brother who sings like you and um, he has the same charisma like you. And I'm just hoping one day you guys will meet. And that was it. Mm -hmm. But personally, I had not seen him before. I didn't even know how he looks like. 
Um, but for me, when he told me that, okay, I told him, okay, I'm willing to meet him. It was after that, then I had the privilege to meet him. He came to visit us in, um, in my church. And uh, I guess we couldn't, we didn't even talk, right? You know, uh, that because he's that type, you know, right off the church, you won't see him. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> He wants after the benediction, that's all, uh -huh. you know, um, and that is one thing I respect him for. It was after that, this whole scene, that, you know, I had a project coming up, I mean, the first song, and then I invited him. Let's talk about the first uh, work you did together, well, the title, and uh, what was it about, and what inspired you? Well, so the first uh, project that Albert actually did is called Call to Him. It's actually on all music platforms, and definitely if anybody's looking to take a listen to it, you can get it on iTunes, Apple Music, YouTube, just put his name, Albert Yehoah, and you get to do it. So a little bit about the first um, project, uh, <laughs> it took a journey as well. It took a very deep dive into um, looking for producers, looking for singers, paying, lump sums of money that he had to lose because at the end of the day from one person to other the people you know were not consistent with him um, people were not truthful to him so he wasn't able to build relationships so I think that that was the thing God was trying to teach him as well after he had accepted to do you know something for God so his first project had to go through a lot of ups and downs until gracefully um, the music director or the former music director of Fred Hammond, you know, caught up with him because he sent him a message and say, hey, I'm doing this and um, how about you helping me out? But surprisingly, you know, these big names, you don't easily catch them on social media or any platform and they respond back to you. But every day I remember how that whole connection happened. I say that it was just divinely orchestrated because Calvin Rogers immediately responded to him and said, I'm going to help you. I mean, think about it. Fred Hammond, mm -hmm. <laughs> the big name in the United States mm -hmm. and his music director or former music director say, I'm going to do it with you. And he comes on board and he shares his story about how, you know, his project moved from one producer or moved from one person to another and how his money had gone down the drain and says, dude, I've been there before. Fast forwarding, Calvin Rogers flies from Chicago to New Jersey on his own pocket. He didn't take a dime to help us to make sure that he gets it right. So everything that happened for his first project, I would only say that God has been faithful till now. Mm -hmm. So that is how you know we got even connected to Calvin, who has been very supportive, who's been very instrumental in directing and advising, coaching, and making sure that we are on track to, you know, making great music and producing something that not people would like, but what heaven would approve. And so that the people know that God is actually here in the business of men's affairs. And you have a new printed out as well. This is going to be the second together. Right. Yeah. What's the title of that one? So it's called the Amen, right. which came from uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 14. Right. We got this song in 2013, and um, I was just on my way home, um, I think after work, I believe. Right. And um, walking down the road, I was just worshiping with um, a song by Michael Smith. And um, after that song was done, or after I was done singing that song, um, I just heard myself singing Amen. And, you know, for me, I didn't know at that time whether it was someone's song or was my song. So I had to pause and ask myself, okay, wait, where's the song coming from? And then I figured out that, you know, it's a, it's, it's a new song that God probably was giving me and he wanted me to nurture it, you know, and develop it. So, I mean, I accepted the challenge, I call it challenge, you know. And right from that time up until now, you know, we've been working on the song. Right? And um, by the grace of God, it's coming up. Right now, as it stands, uh, so the project is bigger than we can actually hold because it's a God-given ministry. Um, we're looking at it from that angle because um, we've been actually called, commissioned 
to really reach out to the people with a message of reconciliation, God's friendship with people, God's fellowship with people. So this is what we are led to do. And so all the songs that we are writing basically um, connects humans or people back to the fact and reality that God is in the business of still making, you know, friendship with us. So we have a kind of, um, we have tons of songs that we've written and we're just rolling them out as and when it's needful. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, we committed, you know, and we're committing a lot of prayer. We're committing a lot of, um, you know, spending time, quality time with the Lord concerning the seasons as well, because we just don't want to be like, oh, we are releasing songs. Good. And uh, two songs uh, in uh, after you guys sort of linked up, um, you find yourself living in the U.S. and you're from Ghana. So when it comes to even uh, your ideal sort of audience, who are you targeted? We are not trying to make it too complex. You see, that also would have determined where you know it goes and who actually will be able to listen and appreciate it. And that is why our songs are more, you know, very um, straightforward. No too many embellishments or no too many ad libbing and like the details are not too complex. They are songs that any instrumentalist or any musician can pick it up and any singer, any music person, yeah. if you're not even musically inclined, you'd hear it and you'd want to, you know, you can always fall in love with it. Uh, whilst we were even doing the video, a two-year-old actually just hearing the song sung like two times began to sing it, as, you know, along with us. And that's the kind of aim. So we are not trying to make it too complex, but in that also is some complexity, but we take it, <laughs> you know, we want to hide those details. <laughs> yeah. Are you now a duo? We are working together and we still also have our individual, you know, um, project that we are undertaking. So when uh, we have to be together to do some projects, we do because like I said, we have a store bank of, you know, collections that we are releasing as and when. But at the same time, God has given him unique, you know, messages and unique um, songs that he's written down. The same thing applies that God has given me unique styles and songs that also need to be you know, released for every <coughs> occasion. So basically right now we're doing duo, but at the same time we have individual projects. But in terms of inspiration and in the kind of music you do, who are some of the other artists that have sort of, uh, you've listened to over the years and you sort of uh, are inspired and you are driven to do what you do? Looking at um, the people who have gone ahead of us, definitely uh, um, the scripture says in Deuteronomy that um, we should ask the fathers, all right? And then after we ask the fathers, we should also, you know, inquire from the elders, regardless of where we are right now. There are fathers in the industry, there are elders in the industry, like Don Morn back in the day when they were under the umbrella of integrity music, um, Ron Canali, you know, Danny McClurkin, you know, um, Darling Shed. These are the people that um, have given us the idea that it is not just only about um, the craft and the talent. You want to still be able to do it and maintain a very godly life. And not pompous, like you look at these people, Don Moen, you know, Yolanda Adams, Fred Hammond, they're still everyday people. They're still connected, and these are the people we're saying that, you know, at least we don't ascribe to be like them. We have our unique, you know, abilities, right. but we make sure that we respect the kind of grounds they have prepared so that we just make sure that we're doing the right thing and making sure that everybody who also comes after us will be able to do this with decorum, with honor, and the beauty of holiness to glorify God. I like the way all your examples are Americans. You forgot our, our people back home, but what do you think about uh, the industry back home in Ghana, especially the gospel music, uh, moving on? There are few people that their songs always stands out to me and their ministry, all right, mm -hmm. and their personality, right. um, and that I'll be emphatic about. And there are few people that I'm looking up to, right? Um, I've always been looking up to um, May his soul rest in peace. 
Amen. Done the Amen. Um, <laughs> Pastor Isaiah. He's one person, you know, I can't stop thinking about him. Um, Joe Mento. I mean, I starting this whole journey as, you know, as a singer, I remember listening to Joe Mento's songs. And most of the songs, you know, I normally um, lead during church service was his songs, right? Um, because of the fact that, you know, he, he had the presence and um, um, his charisma always stood out for me. So one of the persons I look up to in the industry is Mr. Joe Beecham. I had a personal touch with him um, back in Takarade when I used to, when I was in school. Um, he took me in as his own, you know, brother, son. And as a matter of fact, he was even my prayer partner. There were times he called me, he was like, hey, Okata, where are you? Let's meet up and pray. Yeah, so it's also the same name that he mentioned um, because I had a touch with Minister Denny Nate before his passing, actually. Um, he connected with us um, back home um, with Ray Church, Accra Ray Church, and he was helping very much instrumental in the music um, department because we used to invite him to come have worship sessions with us and then even when we our music group would go on retreats he would actually come as well so um, minister Denny made to make his soul rest in peace but i actually had a, um, a personal relationship with him so he would even sometimes call me um come over to my place so i'd go to his house i'd pick him up he'd go cut his hair he, you know so we used to just roll around but this was even on the quiet you know this was very Quiet between me and him and he would tell me very intimate things you know from how he started and you know where he is and you know sometimes he would say plain he says Felix this is what I do for a living all right so and I don't take it lightly I don't play with it so he would like he was more open about ministry and brought me into the awareness that, look, we have, we're not just singing because we can play the instrument and we can sing, but we've also accepted this as a way of life to bring glory to God. So, Fantastic. Uh, so before we wrap up, uh, what should we expect from you guys and also how can people sort of connect with you and the music? I mean, I would say that there is more songs coming, you know, um, that I can, I can be emphatic about it. I'll just want you know um, everybody to just wait and see the manifestation of God being revealed through you know the songs and the ministry um, He's given us. All right, guys. So it's a wrap. Uh, make sure you listen to Amen, stream it on all platforms, right. and uh, of course the all the other work that will come up from uh, Felix and Albert. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.